Get everybody called the Lord. I'm going to call on our assessor, Bob Ramsey, to come uh, lead us in prayer, and then Dallas Green is going to lead us in pledge. Bob? Join me in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the many blessings that you allow us to enjoy each day. Lord, we just pray that uh, you continue to be with us. And Lord, we're thankful for living in a country that, that we're free to meet as a county committee and try to make things better in our community, in our county, in our state, and even in the country, Lord. We pray that you continue to be with us each day. We thank you for all the blessings. We ask it in your name. Amen. 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 To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. We'll do a quick roll call. Um, I think... The pages are over there. Oh, okay. I think it's pretty clear we have a, a quorum here. If um, if you haven't checked your name off, uh, if you're a member, uh, we hope you'll do that. Uh, maybe as we finish up here and let everybody know that uh, you were here, so keep track. So without objection, I'm going to rule that there is a quorum here this evening. And uh, we do have a number of guests. It's tough to introduce everybody. I know we've got a bunch that are here with campaigns. Um, let me introduce just a few people, and then uh, we may just see if there's others that need to be in introduced. We've got a new uh, transplant that's just moved here uh, to Arkansas that uh, is actually the son of one of my uh, good buddies, uh, Ryan Lund. Hi. Let's, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> for thinking about maybe uh, finding a job here and staying here. I came for Christmas and you all hooked me. I <laughs> rescued a dog, met a lot of great people, and I'm like, I'm not going to California, I'm just going to stay here. There you go. We have the second vice president of the uh, Hot Springs Village Republican Women, Lana Prozen, who we got a membership uh, forum this evening, a, a final forum. Let's see, who else we got? Joe Ripma. We're going to see you, Joe. Good to have you. First time visitor. Uh, John White, who also put in a forum to join us. Uh, Serge Kikorian, where are you at? Yay, there's Serge. There's Serge. There's a lot of catering around this good community. We have uh, Shelly Poole with us with uh, MySeline.com. Princess Ray. It's good to have you, Shelly. Uh, we have Cheryl Gunther. Gunther? Gunther. I always pronounce that wrong. Sorry, Cheryl. I think she attends our meetings more than she does the Pulaski County meetings. So you go to both. Well, hey, it's great to have you with us. Okay, and I think, uh, let's see, do we have every uh, judicial candidate? Let's see, I see, I'm just going to announce all the five I can see, and then, uh, <laughs> and then, and then if the other one's here, I guess you can uh, shout out or something, but starting at the back, we have Brent Standridge, running for judge, Josh Newton, running for judge, we have Josh Farmer, running for judge, Brent Houston, where did I see Brent at? Up the front. And somewhere hidden around here, I saw Clay Ford. There's Clay. So I think that's everybody. Um, the number of the folks that are running and are gonna, going to go ahead and give uh, presentations tonight have brought family with, and I'll let them introduce their family if that's okay. Who have I, who have I missed? What other uh, guests have I missed? Tim, you got a guest? Oh, I do. This is Emily Cochran, my granddaughter. All right. <laughs> Other guests. We got a couple of guys from Little Rock that are down slumming tonight. We're glad now I see you guys. I think that's two in a row. Maybe make you an associate member here. Um, okay. Any other guests that I need to introduce? Going, going, going. 
and old business, we're going to hear from the treasurer. Um, Bill, would you come up and tell us how we stand on funds? We still have fun. <laughs> Uh, our balance in the operating account at the beginning of January was $3,043.92. At the end of January, it was $3,101.53. In the political account, it was $20,859.42. And then we ended January with $20,079.42. Uh, we're going to be, at the end of uh, February, we're going to have some changes in that account because uh, all the spending for the Lincoln Day dinner is going to come out of that account and everything we, all the donations and everything we get for that is going to go into that account. So I expect it to be a lot bigger uh, when I get this talk in March. Yeah. If I've got all the numbers. <laughs> uh, and the TAR account uh, is still at 433. And that's about it. So, we still have money. <laughs> Any questions for our treasurer? Hearing none, the uh, chair would entertain a motion to approve. Motion to Tim? No. Second. Any seconds? Second. 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 Okay. Um, I guess we'll give that to David McCollum since he just got back. <laughs> um, hearing no discussion, all those in favor say aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Um, we are going to have a Lincoln Day dinner committee report, but let's do that later in the meeting. Um, is there any other reports from Vice Chairman? I will note that uh, from a building standpoint, uh, Matt was unable to be with us this evening, but uh, we did get our third quote on blasting the outside of the building and preparing it to be repainted. And uh, That'll be something we'll probably do later in the spring. It is going to run into some money, so we obviously will bring that information to you in, in our future meeting and uh, discuss uh, whether we want to go ahead with that, what color we want to paint the building. We're still looking for some ladies to give us some input on what color the building is. Be, so y'all give that some good thought. Any good color. Any other business? Old business. Hearing none, we will go into new business. And the first item on the agenda is we will hear from two speakers. Both of these individuals are uh, neat folks that are running for District 31 state representative that was vacated uh, by Andy Davis, who is the current uh, state representative, and he decided not to run for re-election. Uh, so each of these individuals will have 10 minutes to tell us about themselves and their families and why they're running for State Rep District 31. And by a coin toss, R.J. Hall will go first. R.J., give him a round of applause. Turn on like holding things. Boy, thanks for coming out. Good crowd tonight. Uh, with the weather changing, we finally got snow. I know a lot of people were uh, excited about that. I know. My little girl, when she walked outside, she said, Daddy, you know, she, she'd never seen snow before. Uh, I came to Arkansas about 20 years ago. I came from a little town called Athens, Texas. Uh, never had been to Arkansas before. I, I got recruited to play baseball at the University of Central Arkansas. And uh, at the time, whenever I was recruited, I, I told my mom, I said, uh, I said, Arkansas offered me a scholarship. She said, really? Really? I said, yeah, Mom, they, they came and saw me play, and it was a great deal. And so... We get back home, I'm looking through the brochure and everything's purple and white. And Mom goes, I thought the Razorbacks were, were red and white. I said, I thought they were too. And we started doing some more research and we found out that we were the Purple Bears. And I committed to a Purple Bear in Conway. And so ever since that point, I, I've been in Conway in, in Arkansas. I married my wife uh, four years ago, who is from Saline County. And uh, we have a little girl named Addison who's two years old. They would be here tonight, but as you can imagine, with the two-year-old, she would be the, the highlight of the, the entertainment tonight, and probably all the focus would be off of me in our, in our comments. And so, uh, with that being said, I am a small business owner. I own two businesses in Bryant, a monogramming shop and a multimedia shop. Um, that I've had the multimedia shop for 11 years, and we started the monogramming shop two years ago that has been quite uh, profitable in Bryant. Um, in my time in Bryant, um, 
I also became a member of the Bryant City Council. I'm currently going into my second year on the City Council, and uh, we've done some great things. We, we have a great group of people over in Bryant that is allowing for us to, to move forward and move forward in a positive way with conservative values. Uh, my full-time job, I work for 103.7 The Buzz. I do a morning radio show with Tommy Smith, David Basil, and Roger Scott. Uh, and really, during that time, it's allowed for me to give back. My mom uh, raised me and my two sisters as a single mother. My dad was an alcoholic, and I didn't have a dad. And, and really, when I, when I talk about my heroes, I, I get asked, I've asked, been asked many times on this campaign trail, who's your hero? Who do you look up to? And, and my number one person I say is my mom. She was the person that told me how to fix a flat tire. She was the first person that, that really showed me how to, to really be a man. And my mom, I'll never forget, she told me, she said, RJ, one of the biggest things that you can always give back is not your money, not your time, it's how you can serve people. And I've taken that throughout my life, especially with the buzz, because what it's allowed for me to do is it's allowed for me to have a microphone to, to reach thousands of people and, and talk about uh, ways that we can raise money for charities or, or help um, people in need. We, we've helped people with the hurricanes. We've helped local charities. In fact, uh, over the last four years, myself and I have gotten involved with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, the American Cancer Society. The Make a Wish Foundation. I've raised almost four hundred thousand dollars for local charities, not only in Saline County but Central Arkansas. And so I, I, I began to think a couple years ago. I said, "How can I take my service to the next level? What can I do to take my service to the next level?" And uh, I talked with a friend of mine. You, a lot of you may know Shane Broadway in Saline County. And he said, "RJ, he said, why don't you try to get on, on the city council?" Well, my mom was on the city council back home. And I used to say, I am never doing that. That, is the, that sounds like the worst job in the world. People calling at 11 o'clock at night, talking about their dogs, it's barking and keeping everybody awake. Fast forward 20 years, I'm on the Bryant City Council, and I love every minute of it. Because in our time on the City Council, I've helped uncover almost $500,000 of unused bond money to restore the oldest ballpark in Bryant that was dilapidated. There were homes around that area that now their property value has gone up because we've restored this ballpark. It's allowed a place for kids to go and play that normally they, they have to go across town to play. We, we led that charge. Also, uh, on the city council, we have given just recently in our December meeting, our police and firefighters a much needed raise that they've not gotten in four years. The previous administration had, had not gotten uh, to a point where we could give our police and fire a raise and for the first time in four years We gave them a raise because when you come to Bryant you come for two reasons you come for education you come for safety Well, if you we've got a good education system in Bryant, but and we've got a great police and fire department Let's take care of those folks. So now those salaries are now competing with Benton. They're now competing with Maumelle cities that are are comparable to the city of Bryant and I, I might add that we did all that without raising any taxes we, we found money in our budget that we were able to allocate funds from a, another department. We were able to allocate funds that hey, were in our savings account that we were able to give these raises. You know, when you think about the issues in District 31, I've talked to a lot of people, and you think about the Second Amendment, you think about pro-life, you think about education. Those three things right there are huge for me. Anybody that's a Republican, when they stand at this podium or, or any meeting, everybody in this room expects them to say, you know, I am for this. I'm for lowering taxes. We expect that, right? Mm -hmm. But what are you going to do when you get there? And for me, ever since I've been on the city council, I, from day one, it's about the, a plan of action. It's about getting involved, getting in there, and getting your feet dirty and your hands wet right when you get to office so you're not just sitting there trying to learn the ropes immediately. You get involved immediately. And so, you know, I look at, uh, at, at, a, at our Second Amendment rights. That's one thing that I am not going to, not going to budge on at all. I, I grew up, my, I was telling a gentleman earlier that when I was young, my grandfather, I was, I think I was 15 or so, he uh, got me my first NRA membership. I had no idea what the NRA, NRA was when I was 15. He, he told me, he said, son, you are, uh, you're going to love this membership for the rest of your life. I later found out what it was, and I've kept that membership going ever since. Uh, I'm 34 years old now, and I've kept going ever since. I think that our Second Amendment rights are under attack right now. If you look at what's happened to Virginia, uh, it's, a, it's an absolute travesty what's happened in Virginia with, with our Second Amendment, Amendment rights. I think my water's back there, if you could grab that for me. Um, and, and we've got to make sure that here at home, that stuff does not happen here locally. Thank you, Josh. By the way, Josh, there's no <laughs> 
we get we got to make that make sure that those issues don't happen here at home. We've got to have conservatives in our house that can stand up for our Second Amendment rights and not be afraid to stand up for what our founders said. Those were our rights and they should not be infringed upon. I think our education system is by far one of the top priorities in District 31. When you look at our education system, across the country when there's a poll that comes out, Arkansas always ranks towards the bottom. Why is that? We've got millions of dollars being pumped into the state of Arkansas. Why don't we have programs that are, are making our classrooms a competitive environment? Why are we not having our teachers being competitive in the classroom? We've got to, we've got to change that and change it now. There's no time to wait. That I, I know that my, my opponent, he, he, he's big on education. He and I share some of the same values when it comes to that. We've got to, I saw in the Democrat Gazette a few weeks ago and uh, that the Little Rock School District paid out over a million dollars for substitute teachers. That's wrong. I'm sorry, that is wrong. When you've got teachers that are being paid to educate our kids, they should be in the classroom. They should not be out taking, I understand everybody needs to have their time, but during the school year, we've got to have our educators in the, in the room teaching our kids. We've got to change that. And finally, when you look at abortion rates, 100% we should ban abortion in the state of Arkansas. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. When you look at it, a, a child that is, that is in the womb, when, when it is conceived, that is a human life. And, and I know that there are many of my fellow Republicans out there, they say, well, you know, you could, you could wait a couple weeks and, and let a, a mother make a decision. That's wrong. That is 100% wrong. And I will fight if I'm elected for the birth, or for the birth of all children. And make sure that when that child is born, that they have an option to be adopted. I know Tony Furman was talking about last month, about how he's, a, he's been involved in the adoption process. That's, that's, that's outstanding. We've got to have more people like that, and I want to fight for our abortion rights. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I know that there's a lot of people that, that can sit up here and say this, but it's about passion. It's about the willingness to stand up and, and say, I want to fight for our Kansas. When you talk about lowering taxes, I, I don't think there's a, a candidate out there that can come up here and say, well, I know exactly what tax I'm going to cut. They don't. It's when you get involved and you get in those committees that you, you start looking at taxes and saying, what fat can we cut off those taxes? What, where can we find ways that we can efficiently run the government and be able to, to still cut our taxes down so our Kansans can have a better paycheck? I was talking to a guy in Ferndale the other day. He said he lost his, his wife lost his job. They're going paycheck to paycheck right now. And he said, I look at the taxes, and I've got $250 coming out of my paycheck. He said, I'm, I'm working my tail off. He said, how do we change that? I want to fight for that as well. My campaign's been endorsed by Lieutenant Governor Tim Griffin, Atten Attorney General Leslie Rutledge, Benton Mayor Tom Farmer, Bryant Mayor Alan Scott, Saline County Judge Jeff Airy, and the Little Rock Fraternal Order of Police. And it's not because I've got friendships or relationships. It's because those people have seen what I've done on the Bryant City Council and through life as far as charities and things of that are concerned. And so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, on March 3rd, I'd love to have your vote. I'd be honored to have your vote for R.J. Hawk for District 31. You do a little housekeeping. I, I don't want to mess up the speakers when they get to the last minute, but uh, would somebody be willing to time? And, and when you get to one minute left, could you vote? Well, Anna will be the person you want to watch when you're getting close because we don't want to take a hook and pull you off the stage or anything. So anyway, um, our next speaker, uh, the other candidate, uh, Republican candidate for the state representative district is Keith Brooks. Let's give him a round of applause. I figure my wife will probably throw something at me if I start to go over time. So my name is Keith Brooks. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you tonight and also to be able to serve in the Republican primary as a candidate for District uh, 31. So often in introductory type opportunities like this, it's, it's fairly common for someone to give a list of personal facts and history that might seem important to the group that you've gathered with. I would assume also that, that maybe a candidate would talk a little bit about the conservative ideals and credentials that set them apart. You know, I figure that, that if you're here tonight, that our agreement on passion for GOP ideals is probably pretty clear. 
Uh, I would imagine that, that our agreement on party principles, it shouldn't be in question. I would assume that we probably all know them by heart. Uh, the power of faith in God, the sanctity of life, that Second Amendment guarantee of the personal right to own and bear arms, lower taxes, which are drivers of economic growth, a strong national defense, individual responsibility and initiative, individual freedom and liberty through limited government. But those, amongst others, are the, are the things that we have agreed to as members of the Republican Party of Arkansas. If you've done Wayne more than a minute or two, he's probably giving you one of these little books. Right? He's actually probably giving you about 10 of them so you can give to all your neighbors. For me, however, you know, this is, this is more of an opportunity to talk to you about what moves me. Um, one of my favorite authors uh, on leadership and business is a guy by the name of Simon Sinek. He talks in one of his books that it's not necessarily about what a leader organization does or how they do it. Really understanding a leader organization is understanding the why behind what moves them. So I love my family more than I can put into words. I'm blessed with a godly and compassionate wife, Jenny, for almost 19 years. We've got three awesome kids, Hannah, Ethan, and Luke. They are 14, 13, and 12, or and 10, sorry. Uh, Hannah loves music and the performing arts, and she likes to run half marathons with dad. Ethan would prefer to talk about World War II history and geopolitical chaos. And then Luke has told us since he was about five years old that he's going to coach the Hogs to a national championship in football one day. And I hope that he's correct. <laughs> so a visit to Arkansas Children's Hospital in 2009 changed the course of our family. And it put in a fire in our hearts and ignited a fire to serve. When a doctor tells you that your two-year-old has a diagnosis and that you as a family need to learn how to live with it, most people are defeated. Our response as a family was to do what we always do in tough times, and that was to fight. Hundreds of hours in therapy clinics, endless visits to doctors, Countless times with schools and academic settings, tens of thousands of dollars spent, all with the exact same goal, to get what is best for our son. What I found on this journey is that there are tens of thousands of Arkansas families who share the exact same challenge. And many of them feel frustrated, confused, and oftentimes defeated. We know that data says as many as 20% of our kids struggle with a specific learning disability like dyslexia. In Arkansas, K-12, that's almost 100,000 kids. When you add to that other people who deal with very significant developmental delays, the social and economic impact to our state is significant. However, we've been given the opportunity to be a voice to the voiceless. To truly make a difference for the generations to come, we need to elect a principal conservative who's walked the same road as so many other Arkansans. So my roots lie here, right here in Central Arkansas. My grandmother was born just down the road in Trapswood. Uh, her husband, my papa, was one of Little Rock's first motorcycle policemen back in the 40s and 50s. He taught me the value of public service. He actually defended the Little Rock Nine in the Central High Crisis. Many of those same folks were friends and classmates of my dad at Central High School. Growing up in the small town of Searcy, I learned early on the value of sacrifice. Since my parents lived uh, paycheck to paycheck, I got a paper out when I was eight years old. It's a job I kept all the way through college. When you are an eight-year-old and you get up at 4.30 in the morning to serve customers, I can guarantee you it teaches you something about responsibility. I still remember that little pencil box that I kept in my room. It had $115 of cash. And it's what we bought our first color television with. I know what it's like to serve people. So as a teenager, I continued my entrepreneurial bent, and some friends of mine and I started a Christian music group. After graduating from Harding with a degree in business, uh, which is where I also got my master's in business, we moved to Nashville, signed a record deal with a music company, and had a chance to tour the nation. I can tell you one thing, and that is, when you work with teenagers on an every single day basis, you can show them that there are values that are greater than yourselves. And that teaches you something extremely important. So those unique experiences allow me to spend the first part of my business career in the healthcare field. I spent almost 10 years working with physicians, clinicians and patients, primarily in the orthopedic and pain management sectors. We've got a monumental crisis that we face with opioid addiction and other prescription medications. I've seen that fight up close working with patients, dealing with it with a family member, and just last week, the unexpected passing of a dear friend. Principal conservative values aren't just for the Second Amendment and taxes. Our solutions extend to every corner of society. So now, as the owner of a State Farm agency right here in Benton, I know firsthand the challenges that small business owners face. As a backbone of our economy, we sacrifice every single day to make sure that every need of our business, our customers, 
and our team are met first. I have a chance to talk to the hardworking citizens of Central Arkansas and District 31 every single day, and I'm fully aware of what's important to them and their families. So it might be the neighbor that I stood with for five hours a couple weeks ago as their house burned to the ground, just as a shoulder to cry on. It could be the young woman I talked to yesterday in Perrin, who juggles an aging mother with sons that she tries to get to work every single day, with a husband who has to work the night shift just to earn a couple extra bucks. Or maybe it's the family that I work with just today who closed on the home that they've always wanted. Whether it's walking through devastation, working to the point of exhaustion, or realizing our dreams, we all want the same thing. We want to protect life at all stages. We want to keep more of our hard-earned money. We want to know that the tax dollars we give are spent wisely and not wasted. We want to be able to live out that constitutionally unable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We want to make sure that the Arkansas that our kids have is better and more prosperous than what we've been blessed with. And so the experiences of my 44 years are the why behind the reason that I decided to run to serve the, the citizens of District 31. It's why I feel a calling and why I'm humbly asking for their support every day and your support in this primary. So if you're a parent that knows the pain of losing a child in the womb, but also understands that that child was made in God's image and must be protected and valued at every single stage of life, I get it. I've been there. You can count on me to represent you. If you sat and cried because another doctor wanted to place limits on what your kid could do, or another school told you that they, they just don't have the resources to help, but you're determined to never, ever give up the fight, I get it. I've been there. You can count on me to represent you. If you, like me, know that one of the best parts of fall in Arkansas is enjoying our natural state at its finest and harvesting that 10-point buck that you've been watching forever, and you're determined to make sure that our Second Amendment rights are never infringed and are passed down to the next generation, I get it. I've been there. You can count on me to represent you. If you're the foundation of our economy as a small business owner and want to pay less in taxes and not have to wade through burdensome regulation so that you can invest more and grow your dream, I get it. I'm there right now. You can count on me to represent you. In 1988, my grandfather, who was a lieutenant colonel of the Air Force, took me to see President Reagan speak at the Little Rock Airport. He reminded us of this uh, conservative foundation, which was to quote, a generous spirit that's a backbone of our country. It's Americans helping themselves and each other, reaching out and finding solutions that governments and huge institutions can't find. Reagan's words stuck with me. This opportunity isn't about trying to climb the ladder to the next level of success. It is about instilling that same foundation that I heard the great communicator talk about when I was 12 years old. Freedom and human dignity are spiritual rights that are granted by God. Government's job is to secure those God-given rights. As your state representative, you can count on me to be a principal conservative at every turn, to champion the same ideals and values that we hold dear, to serve with the highest integrity, and to always put the constituents and the needs of our Kansans in District 31 above everything else. I appreciate your time tonight. I'd be honored to have your support in this primary. You may God bless you. Keith, thank you, RJ. I will note that uh, whoever wins that primary is going to have both a Democrat and an independent opponent this fall, and we will need to be there as a county committee to make sure whichever one of these two sharp individuals wins the primary uh, gets elected. Okay, next we have uh, speakers from District 22. This is a seat that was vacated uh, by Mickey Gates and uh, is currently vacant. But uh, the three of these individuals are running for that seat. And uh, we did a coin toss and determined the order. And first up, for five minutes, will be Richard Mitkin. Richard, let's give him a round of applause. We get half the time. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we get for half the three. Well, let me start off by saying something. President Trump was acquitted. Thank you, Saline County Republican Party, for giving me the chance to speak tonight. I really appreciate it. 
Hi, I'm Richard Midkiff. I'm married to the lovely Kathy DeSantis Midkiff. Together we've got, between the two of us, we've got nine kids. Um, if you don't know what caused that, employment. And I was raised in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and Costa Rica. My parents were preachers and missionaries from 1950s till the 1980s. I was also served in the armed forces. My career in the Navy, aviation, and in the Army spans about 35 years. I'm still serving. I retire next year. I had the honor to hold a flag for President Reagan at the rededication of the Statue of Liberty. That was very nice. I got to meet Mr. Greg I was really young. I also got to meet President Donald J. Trump. I just completed more tour duties, Operation Cold Steel, followed these before that, of two more tour duties in the same operation, different name. Um, I thought I did a pretty good job. The Army thought I did better. The President Trump awarded me a, yep, a meritorious service medal. Other than that education, I hold an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, a dual master's degree, and I'm 39 hours doing my doctorate. My, my employment, I'm a college professor at National Park College. I teach political science and criminal justice. That's my night job. My day job, I'm a police officer. I'm a field training officer, Garden County Sheriff's Department, and I really love that job. If you've ever met any police officer, you tell them, tell them thanks for doing a good job out there. I'm currently the junior vice commander of VFW Post 10483 at Hot Springs Village, which that job there is just, it's great. And when you get to stand with these other patriots that served in World War II, truly are America's greatest generation. The Republican platform has 10, ten principles. If you, if you've ever sat down and read them and studied them, I have. The first one is faith in God. The second is sanctity of life, which is anti-abortion. I'm against abortion. I have a son named Marcus that's autistic. And he's not an autistic son. He's my son that happens to be autistic. And I know that there's tests out now that people like to see if their child is Down syndrome or something. I'm against abortion. To think that you would want to abort a child because he's autistic is sad. There's other issues, but I've only got five minutes. Sorry Thanks. about that. That's okay. <laughs> um, but either way, you know, gun-free zones. I'm a police officer, okay? They don't work. I talk to them all the time. These guns aren't legally purchased. They could care less about your this, anything. They're criminals, and that's why they're in jail. We got a lot more than out there. We got three big problems in Arkansas. I'll tell you what they are. We got a problem with drugs, a problem with crime, and a problem with people that are homeless. You know what? It's all connected, okay? An issue on taxes, I'm against tax extensions, tax increases, new taxes. To put it in black and white, I do not support this tax extension that our governor would like to do. I'm against it. I think we should get rid of the used car sales tax. We need to get rid of the food tax, which is currently 0.125%. Get rid of that. I think our senior citizens have been paying taxes enough. When they turn 65, they shouldn't pay more property tax. It only makes sense. It's done in other states. And you say, how are we going to go and replace all these taxes? Well, we already are. We've got medicinal marijuana. We've got casino. We've got gambling. Where's all this money going? Arkansas did not have a problem getting your money, but they have a problem spending your money. I don't have all the answers, but I can tell you one thing. For 35 years, I've worn three uniforms, and I like to serve you a little rough. So if you live in my district and you're out there, please vote for me. Next up, my coin toss, Richard McGurk. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to tell you that uh, public speaking is not my strong point. My strong point is getting things done. So I'm going to do the best job I can for you tonight, and I'm going to do that by telling you the three things that I would want to know if I was looking at a candidate. I would want to know what they stand for, I want to know what their qualifications were, and I want to know who they were as a person. So what I stand for, I am a real Republican. What I mean by that is I, I have read this little book, every word in it, I understand it, and I will stand for it. And I will use it when I get the house to help me determine the votes. That in another little book I call the Bible. And also, I believe in the morals and values of our forefathers. We've gotten so far away from that. You know, but I do believe in the Constitution 
the Bill of Rights. I believe in the Second Amendment, and I am pro-life. I believe in a smaller government, and I believe in responsible spending. And most of all, I believe in a government that is by and for the people. My qualifications, I started a small business over 30 years ago, and me and my wife, wife worked very hard to grow that into five corporations that served our community and across, and across Arkansas. We added jobs to the community. At one time, we had over 30 employees. As I grew the business and we became more successful, I was asked to serve on many civic, uh, civic clubs and on many boards. I'm honored to serve on the, on the board of the Salvation Army where we help feed the homeless and underprivileged. I am very honored to serve on the Champion Bible College board that we took and just recently took into full accreditation. And uh, I served on the Hot Springs Planning Commission for eight years and I currently am Justice of the Peace on the Foreign Court in Hot Springs on District 12. Okay. I also began <coughs> the fight against addiction. We've been able to provide chem-free houses, me and my wife, and also built a detox center. We started an organization called Families in Addiction to help families who are having to deal with a loved one in addiction. And who I am, I, you know, I know, I, I, there's a saying that, uh, don't watch, don't listen to what I say, watch what I do. I hope that you will check me out. I have a long service, a long history of community service. I believe in people. I was, I was born into a blue collar family. My dad was an electrician, my mom worked at Sears. My dad gave me a very strong work ethic. <clears throat> and my mom, she gave me passion and a servant heart. And I was very blessed to be raised in that family. Uh, I also want you to know that, uh, like I said, I've been blessed to be successful. I do not want this job because I need a paycheck. I've had my career. I want this job so I can go to Little Rock and serve you, the people. I will serve you as a strong conservative. I also uh, want to tell you that I will not be pressured and I will not be bullied. It's something very important. My wife has been by my side for many years. We raised our children together, we built businesses together, and we served the community together. We're a great team. God was very gracious to give me a spouse that's more than a spouse. She's my business partner, she's my best friend, and let me tell you, if you elect me, on March 3rd, the best thing you're going to get is her <laughs> Also, let me tell you about the election. A little correction, I'm the only one that's running for Mickey Gates' seat. I was very fortunate to have won the Republican nomination in March 3rd, and I'll be running against the Libertarian, and I plan to win that seat. But I'm also the only candidate that's running two elections at the same time, because on that same day, at the same time, on the same ballot, I will be running also for the Republican nomination in November to continue that seat. I'm asking for your vote. Give me time to achieve some things and get things done. So it's as easy as one, two, three. One candidate, two elections, March 3rd, vote my group for 22 twice. <laughs> <laughs> I will point out too the reason uh, these candidates are only in five minutes is we are limited in time and there's three candidates running here instead of just uh, two as, as there is in District 31. So the last candidate who actually won the coin toss and elected to go last, Jack Wells. Jack? Good evening. Well, thank you all for having me here tonight. It's an honor and a privilege. Uh, I like the opportunity just to introduce myself, tell you a little bit about me, why I'm running, and what I stand for. My name is Jack Wells, and I'm running for state representative in District 22. I'm from Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Uh, I was born in Batesville in 1976, but by 1980, my father had moved our family to Hot Springs Village, and that's where I grew up. Graduated from Jesseville High School in 1994. Uh, I won an athletic scholarship to play basketball at John Brown University in Siloam Springs, 
graduated from there in 1998 with a degree in business administration. I spent a few years um, abroad uh, in Houston and lived in Seoul, South Korea for about 18 months and eventually made my way back to Hot Springs Village. I grew up desperate to leave like most kids from where they're at. After being out and about and seeing other parts of the world, I realized what a good deal I had in Hot Springs Village and so made my way back there in about 2001. My mother and I started a business at that time uh, called So Perfect Embroidery. I noticed uh, Mr. Hawk earlier talking about his monogram shop. He just started in Bryant, so it's always good to bump into other fellas that are in the sewing business. <laughs> uh, it's been wonderful. It was a complete surprise for me that it would be such a wonderful business. I did it more or less. My mom's a master seamstress, and she had an alteration business for years, but had always wanted to get into the embroidery side of it, didn't have time. I had come home, my father had gotten sick actually, and I, I had just had planned on being home for a little bit, um, but ended up starting this business with her, and it's been one of the best things I've ever done in my life. Um, I've been a school board member at Jesse Gold Public Schools for the last four and a half years, and that's really the motivator for wanting to get involved in this race. Uh, I've, I'm a lifelong conservative, and I've always felt like I was an active conservative. I've learned otherwise through this process. I never missed a vote. I always thought that was important to, to participate in the voting, but I need to take this to a new level. So part of this uh, uh, desire to run is also a desire to become a more involved Republican. I have a lot of friends um, that are my age that don't think along the same lines that I do. And I've always been the kind of person that didn't want to step on toes. I didn't want to offend anybody. And so I would remain quiet when I knew uh, political discussion would ruffle feathers. The time for that is over, to be honest with you. In light of recent events in the last couple of years, it's very plain to see that it's time to step up. It's time to talk. Even if I'm not successful in this race, this is a springboard to other things of being involved in spreading the message of conservatism and Republican values in our community, in our state, across the nation. The biggest motivator for me for running, as I mentioned earlier, being a part of the Jesseville School Board, I'm concerned about uh, this voucher program that our state's wanting to put forward. And uh, I'm not against school choice. I think school choice is wonderful. Competition amongst, amongst your public schools can only make public schools better. But I do have a problem with using a voucher system that's going to take public school money, money that's earmarked from public schools, and put it in the private sector. If we can find another way to finance that, I'd be agreeable to it. Because I understand why people want to get out of public schools, especially in certain parts of our state. Fortunately, in our district, I think we have wonderful school districts. I know in Saline County, I think Benton and Bryant are very good school districts. So while that's not an immediate problem per se in my district or in Saline County, in your part of the uh, state, I do know in some parts of, of our, our state, we need some work in the public school system. I understand why people want to get out. We need to do better to make our public schools stronger because at the end of the day, no matter how many people want to choose that route, there's always going to be a significant portion of the population that's going to rely on public education. And to defund that would be a mistake. If you want to find another way to do it, I'm, I'm open to that. But don't take public school money and start pumping it into private school, the private school arena. Um, like I said, this is my first foray into something like this. And it's been a learning experience. But win or lose, I've learned some valuable lessons and, and I think it's an it's a open door for me to become more involved in becoming a, a more prominent Republican, a more vocal Republican, somebody that's going to be not afraid to say what, what's right. Um, I'm not going to go through all the, the lists of all the boxes I need to check as a Republican, because I do. Uh, I like to tell people I'm a big Second Amendment person that doesn't own a gun. I don't own a gun. I don't want to own a gun. But I want to live in a society where people can arm themselves if they so choose. Uh, because I, I, I like to read, I like history. I think there's plenty of examples in history where populations are stripped of their right to bear arms and the results are not good. I would appreciate your vote on March the 3rd. I'm Jack Wells for District 22. Thank you to all the candidates.
minutes. So let's give all of them a round of applause. So those of you that have attended previous meetings, you know we try to get you in and out of here in an hour. Uh, we're going to push that tonight and hopefully get there. But uh, as a matter of business, uh, the executive committee met and uh, reviewed a proposal uh, to go ahead and make a donation to Barbara Webb, who is running for associate justice on the Supreme Court, uh, a motion to donate $2,000 that campaign. So that's a motion. Is there a second to that? We have a second, a couple of seconds. Uh, discussion. <coughs> all right. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. We just uh, decided to give $2,000 to Barbara Webb for this round. Next up, uh, oh, you have a motion. I'd like to make uh, two separate motions if possible. Uh, the county committee is allowed to do preferred candidates, which we've done in the past with the, to their vote. So my first motion is to make, to, to, so that the Sullivan County Republican Committee names Barbara Webb the preferred candidate in that Supreme Court race. Right. You have a motion to make Barbara Webb the, the preferred candidate, and Dallas is seconding that. Is there any discussion about that motion? Pretty agreeable tonight. <laughs> All right. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Now, my yeah. second motion that typically we support candidates that are in nonpartisan races, but <laughs> clearly running against the Democrat and Democrat ties, such as what we just did for Barbara. So, I motion that uh, the Saline County Republican Committee make Josh Farmer the preferred candidate in his race. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, would you like to? Discuss a little bit as to why you're doing uh, Josh has been a lifelong Republican. He's a part of the county committee. His opponent is not. His opponent's uh, 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 consultant is Michael Cook. If you know that name, you know that is the uh, chief uh, consultant for all Democrats here in the state of Arkansas. Okay. Any other discussion regarding the motion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we just uh, basically endorse those two preferential candidates. We have other races where we do have, and some of them are here tonight, actually a couple of Republicans running against each other uh, for a judge. So uh, it'd be hard to make a choice in those races. All of them good people. Lincoln Day Dinner Committee. Uh, Tammy Schmidt and Ken Yang are our co chairmen. Would you come up and please advise us a little bit about what's going on and what we need to do? Well, we decided to do a somewhat last-minute Lincoln Day dinner so that we could raise funds to support our candidates in, in November, so people uh, that are running so that we could hopefully max out to them if they have an opponent. So we decided to have a Lincoln Day dinner on Wednesday, February 26th at 7 p.m. There are flyers on your table. There are flyers back there if uh, uh, you want one, but dinner tickets are $50.00. There, it's at the enclave. A dinner and a reception is a hundred dollars. Uh, table for eight is three fifty. So basically, buy seven tickets, get one free. And then we have sponsorship opportunities. I believe the, the Lancasters, the Hawk campaign have already bought gold sponsorships. So we would appreciate any more sponsorships. Uh, and uh, you can also uh, buy tickets online on our website. That's already all on there at SelineGOP.net. If I remember correctly. And it's on Facebook, invite your friends. We're trying to sell 25 tables, which is equal to about 200 people. We already have tickets available, so you can come see uh, Tammy uh, afterwards to buy, purchase your tickets or sponsorships and give her your money. And you can call me anytime if you have any questions. And also advertisements. Oh, yes, advertisements. Uh, if you don't do a sponsorship, you can buy a full page ad in the program for $250, half page ad for 125 a scrolling ad for $100, and it can be listed in the dinner program for $100. And the sponsors are $1,200, $900, $600, platinum, gold, silver. And then an update, we will have a bigger Lincoln Day dinner come September or October. We've submitted uh, two dates. We're not going to announce this figure yet, just in case those two dates don't work. But we've submitted two dates for those. Any questions? 
Okay, I would uh, propose that those of you that hope to attend would see either Ken or Tammy after the meeting because otherwise you get phone calls from us bugging you about buying tickets. So you can you can forestall that happening by go ahead and buying your tickets tonight. But, but if you need to buy a ticket, don't hesitate to call. There you go. There you go. Yeah, all of the funds that are raised by this Lincoln dinner will go into the six JP candidates that are running against Democrats, the state reps that you've heard from some of them tonight that will have Democrat opponents this fall. Or Julie, for example, you've got a independent candidate running against you. Um, or, for example, the state Senate camp campaign uh, where Jeff Crow is running against Alan Clark. Whoever wins that will have a Democrat opponent. So the money we raise, 100% of it, will go into candidates uh, this fall. So we hope you'll understand that and uh, uh, buy tickets and uh, help us be successful so we can help them to the maximum possible. A um, couple of announcements on fundraisers that uh, you probably need to know about. Um, Alan Clark, who is running for State Senate District 13, uh, his re-election against Jeff Crow, uh, is having an event on February 15th at the Enclave. This is just down the road here from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, you can go online on his website or uh, call them and uh, get tickets if you'd like to attend that. And then Barbara Webb uh, is having a $5 ice cream social <laughs> at the Heighton House. Anybody tell me where the Heighton House is? Josh, pointing over here. Across from the fire department. Yeah. Across from the fire department. I'm sorry? It's in Doyle's backyard. Oh, it's in Doyle's backyard. So it's just down the street here in, in his backyard. Um, that's on uh, February 16th, the day after uh, Mr. Clark's fundraiser. And that'll be from 2 to 3.30. <coughs> Is there any other business that needs to come before the county committee? Um, please remember, if you haven't checked in next to your name or proxy, please do before you leave. Because I know some people came in late. Yeah, make together. a check mark if you would so we know you, you were here. Uh, yeah. That's along on the um, yeah. glass cabinet over there. And the pages should be in alphabetical order. Yeah. They were when I put them down. Check them in. Just a reminder, those of you that uh, are currently a member of the county committee, uh, that membership runs until April of this year, and then the new cycle starts, and the 2020 through 2022 membership in the county committee will run from April 2020 to June of 2022. The reason it's a little different is this year we have a presidential uh, primary on March 3rd, where I assume probably Trump will win. <laughs> Based on what I saw in Iowa, we got 97%. We won't do caucuses here. <laughs> I promise you, it's a primary. Get the vote, we'll count your vote, whoever you vote for. Plus all these other individuals here tonight will be on the ballot if you're in their district. Um, any other new business that needs to come before the county committee? Just a reminder, the next meeting is on March 5th, and at this time our, our intention is to review the primary results, um, basically figure out who all won and what we need to do to help them win uh, in November, and along that line we'll be doing some planning, uh, budgetary planning on how much to give the various candidates and how much we need to raise maybe in our fall fundraiser to make sure we can, if, in, if possible, max out with our candidates. Chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. You want to just stay here? Gene <laughs> Gentry moves that we adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Second. All those in favor, please stand up.